So fertilization, nutritional programs. So it depends again whether you are, you are using organic fertilizers or whether you are using um, uh, organic uh, fertilizers. It all depends. In our case, we are using inorganic fertilizers. So, as basal dressing, there is a fertilizer called WVC or WMB. WVC um, is mainly supplied by a company called ETG, Export Trading Group. I don't know in other African countries if it's there or outside the country, but this has got a very good combination of um, MPK and uh, it also has other trace elements within the basal dressing. Then from there, we move in with um, uh, Ken, which is calcium ammonium nitrate. Calcium ammonium nitrate has got uh, um, nitrogen at 27% with a combination with uh, calcium added in. At 27%, this is a good percentage for, for castor with an added advantage of uh, calcium. Then from there, the recommendation usually is that you are going to have to apply, um, you have to put your nitrogen at least three times. One at planting, the next one, when the, the seed, I mean, when the plant has got uh, four leaves and the final one at full flowering. So this would be the recommended way in, in for you to have the maximum yield and maximum harvest. <laughs> but like, like we are saying, we have to be realistic in the way we, we do things. Not every farmer is going to manage to do this. So what do you do as a farmer? How do you emulate this if you cannot have all this uh, as recommended. As a rule of thumb, it's very important to do your soil test. This should be is cardinal. Before you come in to say, what do I apply, which fertilizer, do a fertilizer, I mean, sorry, a soil test. Usually you find that a company that is going to do a soil test for you will even do a, a, a recommendation on what fertilizers to use and what quantities based on the findings and other things. Of course, sometimes it will happen that all the recommendations that have been given, you can't afford. It is very important to, to, to what I would advise is add well decomposed manure. Very important, farmyard manure. You can use uh, goat manure, chicken manure, cattle manure. Just make sure it is well decomposed and clean. Put it in your field. Make sure that probably if you can afford, you have got irrigation system. Irrigate before planting. If you are planting rain fed, ensure that you put it in the soil. You let it sit maybe for 7, 14 days, then you can start your planting. Just to make sure that your seed or your seedlings are not going to, um, uh, to, to get bent. That's how you do it. Not only that, there is manure tea. It's the simple manure, just 150 kg. You use it, you, you, you soak it uh, in um, 200 liters of water. That 200 liters of water, it becomes very concentrated, at least 14 days. Then from there, you can now start using it for drenching in the soil. Drenching, that is, it means applying it in the soil like it's a hose pipe, applying on the soils or spraying on the leaves. So this, the, the ratio is simple when you are uh, mixing. It's, it's 100 to 1, meaning if you have got 100 liters of water, use one liter of highly concentrated manure tea. This is just uh, as simple as the simplest one. You get uh, 50 kg of manure, chicken manure or a combination, you would put it in a 200 liters uh, container or drum, then you put water there up to the, uh, uh, the top. You let it sit for 14 days. You use it as manure tea. If you have got drip irrigation, even better, because you simply use uh, a, a, vent if a fertilizer venturi or which is called um, a fertilizer in liquid fertilizer injector for you to put it in the system. These are very inexpensive but highly efficient ways. And there's also other ways in which you can uh, 
incorporate you know other microorganisms in your growing plan for you to have the maximum yield for you to have for your crops to be fed and protected we'll come to that i'll make another video specifically for that so a good fertilization program is very important for us since we are doing this at commercial scale and we want to have the maximum yield for you to have five tons per hectare it's not a joke you really need to uh, to, to up your game. This five ton, uh, ton per hectare is just from the first cut, first harvest. This is very important. So for us, we make sure that we follow everything to the latter because we know that the optimum or the maximum input that you put in as recommended will ensure that you have got the highest yield. It's very important to remove all the variables that, that can make you fail, not to have a good harvest. Once you eliminate, eliminate them, you are guaranteed at least that you are going to have a proper harvest, such that if anything comes up and you don't have a proper harvest as anticipated, while you had put in all that you could, you go back and ask yourself, where exactly did we go wrong? You have all the records, everything that you did at each and every particular point. It will be easy to pinpoint and say, okay, it is this that we couldn't do as we are supposed to do. That is very important. Thank you very much.